What's going on? Go video. We had a little time, so here we are. We decided to make a video and tell a story. So here it is, story time. We got our coffee, and uh, yeah, we got our coffee. That's all we need in life. Ice cold glass of coffee. So anyway, so it's going to be like a little bit of a ranting through the, the whole week. Um, I'm surprised I'm not as stressed out as I think I probably should be as I uh, go through <laughs> all the uh, little debacles. So a bunch of debacles through the whole week. So it was past two weeks. It's been pretty interesting. So um, yeah, here we go. We sold the uh, Sonic box. That was quite interesting. Um, the buyer paid. Uh, I um, overnighted it with a signature confirmation. So it it got delivered three times, three different pink slips left on the door, went back to the post office. They had it for about 10 days or something. And then now they're sending it back to me. So I don't know how that's gonna turn out. Um, most likely he's just gonna buy it again um, or something like that. I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna work out. Definitely a little mm, stressful, sure, sure. Because if he don't buy it and it comes back and I have to relist it, it does kind of degrade the value of it. So that's that's not good. Um, moving on from there, which it, which is a, a hard to move on. <laughs> um, I got tired. I was going to sit up at the flea market this weekend, and I got tired. So I met up with Steve. Steve ended up setting up. And, um, <laughs> I ended up buying, like, a whole tote, like, a, literally, like, a whole tote of, like, just auger bits off of Steve. I thought that was kind of funny because, I don't know, I thought that was funny. Most people would. It's just, like, random full tote of auger bits. That was odd. <laughs> anyway, um, so he, he set up. And I brought a um, camera lot. So I was trying to get rid of this camera lot. And I was like, huh. If I could just bring this one box down, throw it on his table, give him a little cut if I get rid of it. And um, I might pay for the day of not even, like, bringing a whole load. I could just bring, like, a box, one box. So I tried that. Um, didn't work out. I had four people look at it. And, uh... I think I did the the intimidation scare tactic of like I kind of knew what I had, so don't try and like do no flea market prices here because what I had was very choice and cared for. So I was just like, um, I'm selling everything as a lot. After they started looking at it a little bit, they're getting a little interested. I'm selling it all as a lot. Well, how much is the lot? Twelve hundred. Yeah, it's kind of a lot at the flea market. I mean, I'm sure I would have taken six. I would have taken six. Cash right then, that would have been fine. And um, so after I said that to the three people, they, they kind of were like, oh, all right, put it, put it back carefully, put it back down. And they made their way on, and I was like, huh, I mean, is this really, you know, I thought I did the numbers right, and that it was worth a little bit more than that um let me try uh sizing up the next person by letting them shoot me an offer on it on what they thought it was worth and i knew this one guy was going to come and he did and i tried it on him which was definitely the wrong person to try it on and uh he pulled three lenses out and i was like i want to sell it all as a lot and he was like well how much is the lot i'm like i'll take an offer he says a hundred and I was just like, no, no. So right then I knew, um, just to grab it off the table, that I had to list it. So um, he was done checking it out, grabbed it off the table. Uh, basically what happened with that lot was I took it home, it sat in the car for a day, and then I listed it. And then it sold in two days, his listing right here. Um, it was a nice lot. I, I did not want to 
really part them out in singles. I thought it should go together as a whole because whoever owned it, you know, had a particular camera for all the lenses. So it's like a nice little bundle. So I did that. It sold in a couple days, um, which was nice. And I mean, I, I still held faith in my item. That's, that's definitely a key. You gotta hold, you gotta hold faith in the item. Um, here's the item that I didn't hold faith in. Here's the uh, Union Number no. Two planer, where I thought I scored a three hundred dollar planer. Um, I had it. I listed it at three fifty, um, knowing that I wanted to take three for it. So I listed at three fifty, and. Um, what happened? It sold. Somebody took me, sent me an offer at uh, two fifty four, and I took it. And um, somebody messaged me as I took the offer and said that the one of the the lever was broken, and that they had only uh, <clears throat> offered me one fifty for it. And honestly, I felt like it was two um, simultaneous accounts, like two of the, the same person with two accounts looking at it and one's gonna degrade the item while one's gonna um you know kind of like the item so it, that that's a tactic to degrade your item is to have two accounts and one to bully you on it and then the other to you know be like yeah i mean i could you know, if you want to get rid of it, you know, let me know kind of thing, you know. So one guy will come in, degrade the item, and then uh, it'll be the same guy at another count. And then be like, hey, well, yeah, if you know, if you want to move it, it's, you know, it's got this and that issue. And I think your price is wrong, blah, blah, blah. So it's a good, it's a good way. I mean, I, I get it. Um, but you got to watch out for that. You know, you got to know when. You're gonna know when you're getting that. So I knew I knew it was happening, so it was kind of funny. Um, and then honestly, I had a couple other offers at 150, I think by like three people, and then I just I just took the shortest offer um, at like 130 or something like that, 125 or 130, just to um, snub everyone out and be like. Now your offers are too short, and I'll just take the shortest, shortest guy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking on that. I mean, honestly, it didn't really matter with the money part. I just wanted to get rid of the um, item to the correct home, and I just felt it that, that was that was where it should have went. So that's where it went. Um, here's that sale, or I probably already showed it to you. But anyway, moving on from there. I had a um, keyboard, so, you know, that was a little stressful. It took probably two or three hours to pack it, and, um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd sell one again. It, it, it was difficult, and I was worried about it breaking. Um, the buyer got it two days ago, and I haven't gotten a response from him about it being... Um, broken or not of quality or anything like that so that's good you know um, and then I sold another keyboard but that one was in stuck in like transit so here's the other keyboard I sold and it was stuck in transit for like five days it was just stuck at this one place and I'm like I don't know, for some weird reason, I wanted to just check on everything that was being shipped because they sent out a ton of ground orders, like, one week. And then, I don't know, I guess it was just, like, on my mind. Um, so I checked up on it, and uh, everything's everything's on the up and up. But I, I, was, I was definitely getting a lot of d debacle through the whole week. Um, here's the hornet's nest that I sold. Um, this sold in a week. It was a good sale for sure. That's the highest, highest, um, well, most expensive one that's sold in 90 days. Um, so it was definitely a good one. And the problem with that one was, is the guy bought it on a Thursday. I got tired on the Friday and I knew I had till 
Monday to ship it. Monday was a holiday. It was the 4th. So I sent it out on Thursdays. And this guy was just asking about it all weekend. And um, I sent it out on Thursday. And I'm sitting in my driveway on Wednesday. And I didn't really, no, I was listing downstairs on Wednesday and somebody came up and literally dropped the package back off at my house. And it said um, that it needed a, needed a, a better skew. It didn't have the correct skew or something like that. I was like, I don't know what the hell's going on. So I brought it back to the place the next day, dropped it off. <laughs> now this thing's way behind now too and um they were like yeah nothing's wrong with the uh barcode <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it okay um so i moved on from there that's should be in transit now then this is all in two weeks all this and then i sold a another planer and some patches. So here's the patches that I sold. Nice guy too. Um, and somehow the planer went to his house. Now, I I mean, I do the labels one at a time. I've never shipped, no, no. I've swapped an item before, like a package in a package, but I've never sent two of the same item to one address. It's never happened. And I use the QR code and I take a snapshot and then I write what it is on the snapshot. So it's kind of really hard to mess up. And then I grab my item in my pile and 50% of the time I'll have it, I'll write the name of the item. I'll write that like a cliff note, you know, like plain, plain is a planer, you know. If I sold one, then that's, that's the one. So I use the little cliff note. Um, you know, because I don't want to write, like, Sega Genesis with video games, you know, on it. So, uh, someone steals it, obviously. And so what happened with that? So, basically, the guy that bought the patches received the planer. And this was a long one, too. I mean, he, he was nice enough to... I refunded him all of his money. It was $36 or so to send me back the planer for the shipping and the time to do it. And then I get the, pl I just got the planer back. It's on my porch and I called eBay about it. I'm like, you know, this, this never happens. And I asked them about the QR code and they did say that the QR code can misgenerate, which I don't think it can, but I guess maybe it can where it pulled up like it glitched out and then pulled up the wrong address i don't know i mean it could happen i looked back and compared the two qr codes totally not even shaped the same um totally different numbers two separate trackings two separate two separate everything so i have no clue why the courier just randomly dropped that off and i don't have the original label that i printed to like do any cross-reference back checking or anything like that um so um just gonna end up shipping it out it's going global and the guy that bought the planer he was he was fine with it it's just you know it was a lot of it was a lot of upkeep and checking up on items basically you gotta like upkeep the store you know go back check off confirm confirm deliveries uh, if it's still shipped and you think it's been a little bit too long, check where it is, you know, check on it. I mean, it, it's one thing we probably don't have any extra time to do, <laughs> but, um, when it comes to like three, four, five, you know, thousand dollar items or whatever, then, I mean, you got to kind of check up on it. And I, I called eBay, I was just like, what's going on here? Like. I got, you know, I was just saying, is this, is this normal to have these types of items just go haywire like that? I don't know why they were just, they were just really expensive items that I'm having little problems with. Um, 
but yeah, that was about it. I moved on from there. Um, it's been a good week. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, so gonna send out these cameras tomorrow. Should receive the box back probably Monday and, uh, move on from there. Uh, I don't think anything too drastic is gonna happen with anything. And, um, worst case scenario, relist a box and put 1100 on it, you know, upsell it, um, 1200 or something, and then, you know, take the thousand or whatever. It's worth a thousand, so. I don't know. That's what I got. A little debacle, r ranting and raving, tell you about the box. Yeah, you can sell $1,000 boxes on eBay. Definitely possible. Oh, about the box, too. So I had to do a whole recon mission on this box because I was getting nervous on it. And I'm like, where the hell is this thing? This guy won't sign for it. Why won't he sign for it? So what happened with this box is I checked the address. The address went to a Florida address, and it was somewhere in Disneyland in the, like, like a property in the Disneyland parks. Uh, cause they could see it on Google maps, B big ass complex. And I'm like, well, well, who the hell is this guy? You know? So I'm like, well, I Googled him and his address. So his name was Burke Lopez and apparently he plays for the, the box. And so that's who ended up buying the game. Um, I did a little back checking of his name and whether or not he was a video game collector. And uh, I found an article about him playing Sonic back in the day and like it was his favorite game or something like that and yada yada. And um, him and his brother used to play all the time. Now, you know, if his brother p passed, then it would be more sentimental to have, you know, a, a, a Sonic shrine. So maybe something like that has could have happened or um maybe it's just super diehard hardcore uh sonic fan where uh you know he collects it and you know has a little shrine for it or whatever and um it's gonna go up in value anyway so uh I, it's, a, it's a decent little investment you know you find little quirky investments when you can um yes yeah, so that was pretty cool so i'm pretty confident that I shouldn't have a problem with payment and as far as um, get out of here as, as far as payment yeah I mean I think he's good for it so um, yeah the camera died uh, I appreciate you guys watching um, sorry I haven't been uploading many videos. Technically, when you see the slowdown in my videos, it usually means an upspike in my sales. So, mm, I don't want to have to, like, weigh the factors, but, I mean, you can do the math. I'd rather, you know, have the, uh, upspike in the sales than make the videos right now at this moment in time. But, um... I hope I gave you a couple little things that you can look out for where, you know, you don't have control of the mail. You got to keep, keep an eye on that stuff. Uh, you know, check your trackings and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Peace. Have a good day. Later.